Thank you, Madam Chair. The uh, question is going to be for uh, Mr. Chester. I um, want to cite a few things that I think uh, most Americans uh, would be appalled at uh, what's happening. Uh, since uh, 2021, January, 3.2 million migrants have crossed the border illegally. Uh, we've intercepted 1.2 million pounds of illegal drugs, over 16,000 pounds of fentanyl. That's approximately 3.7 billion lethal doses coming into the country to kill the population 10 times over. Also, we've got uh, 100,000 uh, per year overdose deaths nationally and 2,000 opioid overdose deaths every year in my state of Indiana. Um, I don't know that we need to dispute the facts. I think mostly what I'm interested in, looked at your background, it's impressive in that it's kind of been your job to figure out how to disrupt the supply chain. Of course, now the main manufacturer is China. The main distributor is Mexico. When I was down there in March, I think, of 2021, illegal crossings were 40, 50,000, going up to 60 or 70. Now they exceed 200,000. We all remember the vivid uh, interception recently of I don't know how many pounds of fentanyl are you confident that what we're doing is aggravating the problem, just encouraging more proportionally from what it was pre-Biden uh, administration? And are we making any headway? Uh, thank you very much. That's a very comprehensive question, and, and I want to hit all of it. Um, the, the first thing is I would ask that we all bear in mind that there has absolutely been an increase in the number of drug seized at our southwest border. And those are drugs that are not in our communities, and that's money that will not go to drug traffickers for their benefits. And I think that's the first thing. I think the second thing is, and I think I've mentioned this before, what, what you describe very accurately is the results of a global business enterprise that is driven by profits and is focused on finding vulnerabilities in order to expand their customer base and make as much money as they can with a decreased amount of risk. And synthetic drugs like fentanyl and synthetic opioids um, can be produced at much lower overhead and sold for much more money. And so that's the second thing. And then the third thing is that, that this is not confined, the, the problem doesn't begin or end at the southwest border, but rather it is deep in a country where those drugs are produced it is the conveyances that move them and their raw materials around the world, and they're shipped through multiple means into the United States and into our communities. And so what we cannot do is take individual pieces of that complex and focus our efforts on it and ignore the others. We have to look at it in its totality. We have to determine when there are changes in that environment and focus our efforts against those changes for the ultimate goal, and you use the exact right word, I think, in disrupting over time their ability to be able to move these drugs into our country. And so snapshots of time, uh, I, I absolutely understand that they give certain numbers and certain indicators. What I can tell you is we're approaching this in a holistic fashion, which is what it deserves, because that is the complex of issues that we're dealing with under this particular drug trafficking environment. Let me follow up with this, because that sounds like a good approach in terms of how you're analyzing it, but. We had 40 to 60,000 illegal crossings about a year and a quarter ago. Now it's up to over 200,000. Can, and what they told us then was that the wall, which I don't think ever was talked about being from sea to shining sea, where it was, it was their most important tool along with the stay in Mexico policy. So how do you explain why it's gone from 40 to 60,000 illegal crossings to what could be approaching 300,000 and how we could be doing a better job at intercepting all the illicit material that comes along with the illegal crossings. Yes, Senator, thank you. And, and, and please understand, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to limit my, my comments and my answers to the issue of, of illicit drug trafficking. Uh, but what I can tell you is that's, that is precisely why uh, in the President's FY23 budget, we've asked for $300 million to enhance the capability of CBP to be able to deal 
uh, with illicit drug trafficking across our borders and another $300 million for the Drug Enforcement Administration to be able to do its work within the United States at being able to seize drugs as well. Uh, and, and as I mentioned before, these are very determined drug traffickers that are going to find a way to get the drugs into the country. We, we have the greatest professionals on the face of the earth, but we can always do more in order to give them the tools that they need in order to be most effective against this well, problem. Thank you. I'm, I'm out of time, and I won't go for another round of the questions, but I think carefully about that relationship between how many people are coming across and what's underlying the fact that you're going to be intercepting a lot more illicit uh, materials as well. Thank you. Thank you. Senator 